water. Earth. Fire. Air. The false Avatar Yun and his destructive campaign of revenge is at an end, brought down by the true Avatar, Kiyoshi. But the delay in locating and training her, as well as the disastrous actions of Earth Sage Xian Zhu, have left the Earth Kingdom weak and vulnerable. Bandit groups known as Dao Fei vie for power and territory, and even the citizens behind the walls of Ba Sing Se are not safe. Remnants of the Fifth Nation, a Southern Water Tribe pirate group, and the Yellownecks, a particularly brutal outlaw organization, still linger in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to strike. With the Earth Kingdom in disarray and Kiyoshi needing competent allies to help restore balance, who will answer the call? G'day, I'm Brandon. I'm playing Kiko Mu, uh, water bender from the Southern Water Tribe, and I'm just looking for a good time. Hello, my name's Andrew. I'm playing Jed, the disgraced airbender. Hello, my name is Archie. I play uh, Ted, the airbender. I'm traveling with my brother Jed to assist Kiyoshi in her fight. Hi, I'm Bree, and I'm playing Lily Hana from the Earth Kingdom, and she is a small child who gets in trouble. And I'm Owen, the dungeon master of our Avatar Legends campaign, The Legacy of Kiyoshi which starts right now. Hello there, lovely listener. This is just a warning to let you know that this episode of The Legacy of Kiyoshi may contain adult language or adult themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, everybody! Hello, hello, hello and <laughs> welcome back to The Lost Archives for our Avatar Legends campaign, The Legacy of Kiyoshi. We are excited. We are ready to rock and roll. We've got some really, really cool, fun announcements to share, including uh, a guest joining us tonight who's going to be joining us for a, a fair bit of time, I think. Um, hopefully. Hopefully we don't scare them off this session. Looking at you, Archie, and you, Andrew. <laughs> Um, but we will be we will be introducing our guest uh, in but a moment. I think. Uh, well, I think I think we can introduce we can introduce our guest, and then we can introduce your character when your character appears. So I would like to welcome long term friend of the stream, but has never once played in any of our TTRPGs or D and D sessions. Dragon, welcome. Hi. You've, it's you've, great to be. Here. You've played Raft with us. You've played Phasmophobia with us. What other games have we played with Dragon streams? I think we did. Um, we did Viscera Cleanup. We did Viscera Cleanup Detail. Another classic. What I think. I think they're the main. They're the main ones we've done. But yeah, you, you've yeah. never joined us for a for a D and D or a um or an Avatar Legends session before. And rather perfectly, you've just recently started playing Pathfinder, haven't you? Yeah. So I told I told Dragon that if the scale of learning a TTRPG was like one to ten, Pathfinder is probably like an eight, maybe even a nine. <laughs> um, Avatar Legends is like a two on the yeah. hard scale. <laughs> it's really easy to learn. Good for smooth, the right? combat it's all is one, easy. But for, for us, it's a two. <laughs> <laughs> like the so combat you entered, style. Like, yeah, two combat for us, style is easier than like D and D and things like that because you don't have to think of like all the spells and stuff but the role play is harder to get into sometimes. It's, it's very heavy role play. Um, and there's yeah. not a lot of guidance from the actual like playbooks initially when you just look at them. But um, I do I do think it's gonna be a very, very easy one to pick up. And, oh. and personally, I think if I was gonna teach um, and RPGs to anybody, I would be starting with Avatar Legends to be perfectly honest, because it introduces all the core concepts you need to understand with every other type of RPG with a really brilliantly created world there ready to go that you can jump in and explore and have a lot of fun with. So it's going to be really good. So obviously, very, very excited to have you join us, Dragon. We will introduce your character a little bit later. For those of you who are listening to the podcast, you have no idea who Dragon's playing. For those of you who are watching us on Twitch or on YouTube, unfortunately, the overlay has spoiled a little bit of the um, of the setup. You can see both the artwork and the name of Dragon's character, but pretend with me. Use the theatre of the mind. Pretend with me that you do not know any of this information until we introduce Dragon's character a little bit later on. Um, Very good. Post a note on your monitor. Exactly. Yeah, post, post a note on your monitor. Um, just take out the pixels in that area with a screwdriver or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Oh, well, I'll do that. I can't see me after. <laughs> True. No, it's a um, display. Now, Sorry. Dragon doesn't have a uh, doesn't have a webcam for tonight. Um, that's partly Amazon's fault. There's a webcam on its way. It got a bit delayed, uh, so there will be a webcam in time for the next session. Unfortunately, I think it's arriving at like nine a.m. tomorrow morning, which is just a, <laughs> just a bit too late. Um, just, thanks, just Amazon. A couple hours late. <laughs> 
Jeffrey Bezos. So um, we should get back at Amazon by all using our Prime subs to subscribe to the Lost Archives. Exactly. Fantastic pitch. Our community manager Bree has an important message for all of you. There it is. Uh, that is that is the main fun announcement I have to share. Um, the other fun announcement I have is that we had a particularly incredible session of Curse of Strahd on Monday night. For those of you who are familiar with Curse of Strahd, the module, you will know one of the characters in there, the Abbot of Saint Markovia, a rather odd fellow. Um, the players did. A very creative use of a spell which doesn't get used a lot in DD. The spell called Ceremony. And the effect it has had on the ongoing campaign now and, and Barovia as a whole, like the effect it's now created, is huge. Um it was it was an incredible use of the spell. So I am very, very excited to see how that pans out. Uh, obviously you can catch our Curse of Strahd sessions on a Monday night on Twitch, uh Wednesday mornings, uh dropping on YouTube and on the podcast. Now, one of our members has some has an interesting update for us. Archie, last session, while we were in the middle of our episode, you messaged someone on Instagram. Would you like to take us through a quick background to that for those who might yeah. have missed this? Um, so I sent a message to um, our Lord and Savior, Michael Dante, um, just asking him a very general question. Um, let's see if I can pull it up and read through it. Just letting you know that we're a part of a Avatar role-playing game uh, that gets streamed every week. Um, and we had a question about the creatures of the Avatar universe uh, with the hybrid creatures. Would all creatures be hybrid, for example, beetles and fish, or just vertebrae mammals? Thank you for your time. Also, the stream is called The Lost Archives. Our DM is a great job and could be useful for any voice acting. I, that, that 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 second part wasn't in the text screenshot you sent us, which means I'm not read. <laughs> because you said because you said, Ooh, nice of you to mention the podcast. Oh, the stream. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned the podcast. You, you should we... know this man. He doesn't <laughs> take jokes. Yeah, look, um, community manager. <laughs> I um I realize I realize in hindsight I baited Archie, a man who. Not only takes the bait, but drags the rod and the fishman into the water each time. <laughs> that, that, um, that he is a walking PR nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Would you like, like to... As a person. Anyway, update. Update. Uh, he never replied. Yeah, that's oh. fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's you fair. had us so excited. You built us up so much. Uh, I was yeah. excited. I was mortified. If anything, the silence is actually <laughs> somewhat <laughs> like if compelling. If he responded, it would have been worse. <laughs> No, it would have been. Would have it would have been great. He could have been like, "Wow, that sounds really great. I'll tune in next time you guys are on, or something like that." Like, could have been cute. Been you foundational for like the entire community. Like, all of Avatar would have been like, "Oh my god, we cracked the code now." What he if? What if like... he then said, "Like, I need you guys to like take charge of the Netflix show from here on out." Oh, it wouldn't be any worse. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he's never gonna respond. <laughs> Actually, wait, no. He he just orders his I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on out of limb here. I'm gonna say that he's a very busy man, given that they're currently in the midst of making a brand new Avatar movie with Ang as an adult. I suspect he's probably a bit too busy to reply so to he'll random. He'll reply later. Got it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Surely. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> that's our fun update. Uh, if we ever hear back from Di Martino, uh, we will. Uh, We'll let you know. Yeah, weekly updates. We're gonna do weekly updates. Well, no, I don't think we're gonna do weekly updates. I think we'll wait until we have some news, shall we say? I would like a weekly. So update. you'll never hear about this. <laughs> yeah, this is the last time you'll ever hear about this. <laughs> Look, if you want weekly updates, mate, you can get weekly updates. You, you, I know you two can talk outside of this. You don't need to rely on this for for this ongoing. Goes to anyone, if you want weekly updates, feel free to message me on Discord. I'm happy to. I'm happy to find <laughs> weekly updates. <laughs> just, just post just an update on Discord. Like, can we set up a channel for him so that he keeps it all in one spot? I, I'm gonna, I am. I am. No. But he has to do. He has to do weekly updates. And if you miss one week, there's going to be a punishment in game. I'll do, I'll, do it, I'll do it every Thursday. Okay. Okay. No um, one's going to remind you. You have no. to. <laughs> this is going to be like rung and chirpy, like calling it yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Well, that's that's the only fun news I have to share. I think uh, on that note, I think we should jump into the session. Uh, time's a wasting. Let's uh, let's jump into the world of, uh, of Kiyoshi. Uh, I've got a recap to get us back in so we can get ourselves all, all ready to go. Andrew, you look excited? Yeah, I am. Fantastic. That's what I like to see. tired. What do you mean? Oh, no, I'm good. I think he looks good. 
<laughs> if he misses an update, his character loses a little bit more resemblance to the rock. Um, I, 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 I think. I mean, if he's resembling the rock, then I failed because he's supposed to be no, resembling. Let me say um, John Cena, not the rock. It's meant to be yeah. John Cena with a. Oh yeah, John Cena, not the rock. Perfect, you got it. Yeah, he could he could use resemblance to John Cena each time. I mean, or maybe each oh, session. A little bit of hair. He's he's a bit more visible. People can see him a bit easier. <laughs> I could, you could actually, maybe you have from that point onwards, if you don't do this, you will have an ongoing disadvantage to any time you try and stealth. But if you continue doing it, I will give you advantage to every time you try and stealth because people can't see you, I think is fair, right? High risk, high reward. Done. Captain, my Thanks. captain. Bye. All right. No, I've set an alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. This is good. <laughs> let's do our recap. Let's jump into the session and let's introduce our guest character. It has been three years since the false Avatar Yun has been struck down, and the world now knows the name of the true Avatar, Kiyoshi. But the delay in locating and training her, as well as the disastrous actions of Earth Sage Jian Zhu, have left the Earth Kingdom weak and vulnerable. Kiyoshi's attempts to drive the criminal elements from Ba Sing Se have backfired, the Earth King taking control of her task force and eliminating his political opponents. Now short on time and allies, Kiyoshi and her partner Rangi have moved out to the Okoya Peninsula, sending out a message to each of the four nations. Come and help the Avatar build the future. Answering the call are brothers Ted and Jed of the Air Nation, Kiko of the Southern Water Tribe, and Lily from Ba Sing Se, all making their way to meet with Rangi at the ruins of Avatar Mansion. After a brief meeting with Rangi, the newly formed team were given their first task, to travel to the nearby settlement of Koru to investigate a string of thefts. First though, the team met with Wong, a member of a Dao Fei group called the Flying Opera Company, to get directions, supplies, and a cart to help transport them to the settlement. Travelling for the better part of the morning, the team bumped into Beedle, a Fire Nation merchant travelling from Chin Village, but with little money on hand, the team found his goods a bit too expensive for the time being. Arriving in the settlement, the team split up, Kiko and Lily heading down and introducing themselves to the matron Zulo, and learning some of the background to the current situation. Keen to start interviewing the villagers for more information, Kiko set up a table in the town square while Lily brought him the first witness, a young earthbender called Gime. Meanwhile, Ted and Jed tried to follow some tracks they found out the back of a small farmstead. Unable to learn much of interest, they attracted the attention of the sole resident, an ex-guard from Ba Sing Se called Toka. They quickly learned that supplies from farms further out had been stolen, some of the lumberjacks noticing a figure or figures moving through the forest. Questioning Toka, Ted and, Jen, le, Ted and Jed have learned that Toka thinks it is a special spirit who can earthbend, which to them seems pretty unlikely. We ended last session though with Kiko and Gime as um, a, a brief flirty moment was shared, which unfortunately turned quite awkward after Kiko used the word dowry incorrectly and persisted with it, um, while Ted and Jed were finding themselves very confused during their conversation with Toka. We are going to jump back, not with these clowns, but instead with Lily. Lily, you had been, after bringing um, Gime back to Kiko, you had made your way back outside the village, walking around again, looking for other witnesses that you could bring in to help sort of give you guys a bit of an understanding of the situation. As you make your way down along the narrow pathway towards the lumber yard, this uh, makeshift uh, area in a clearing of the forest where a number of large, uh, what almost look like um, large stands of wood have been hammered into the ground to allow the wood from the trees to be stored in a, in a position that's easier to transport. Not too far away from a sawmill that's been constructed. A very, very nicely made sawmill, I should add, actually. You can actually see a figure walking down the main road. At this point, roughly about 80, maybe 90 meters away from you. A girl dressed in orange red robes, uh, or sorry, I should say sand sandy orange robes with a green undershirt, making her way down the main road, a, a large backpack across her shoulders, looking around as if scouting ahead. As you sort of look around, Tiller, when you look down at the village where you have been making your way to, it's been a bit of a journey over the past few days since you left your hometown on the trail of the bandits who had attacked 
and caused some pretty significant problems for your for your home settlement. You've been making your way tracking them. Uh, your credentials allowing you access, despite your young age, your credentials allowing you access to free accommodation and free food as you've been uh, traveling along. And as you pass the stretch of trees back out into the open again, you look down into the narrow valley where Koru village is located and you see a young girl dressed in classic Earth Nation garb, looking up at you very confused. Lily and Tilla, as the two of you meet eyes, both of you have this strange sensation of recognition. Not that you've seen each other or met each other before, but you're both on a similar mission. You're both looking for someone or looking for something. I pass over to Lily. Um, okay, is there any like bushes on the side of the path or anything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards the edge of the forest, there's um, some scraggly bushes as, as well as ferns as well. I mean, this forest, it's not too dry here. I mean, the further north you head, the closer you get to the Seawong Desert. So the forest will probably give way to scrubland pretty soon. But this area is still quite fertile. There's um, quite large bushes as well as some uh, some ferns uh, along the side of the pathway. Okay. And that that's the side of the pathway that leads all the way up to Tilla. Uh, this pathway makes its way towards the forest. There's a small <laughs> hill. Tilla mm-hmm. is currently at the top of the hill on the main road. You're on the smaller road heading from the village to the lumber yard. Roughly okay. about sort of 80, 90 metres away. So what I'm getting at here is would I be able to hide in the bushes and try to creep up to Tilla? 100%. Okay, cool. I'm going to throw a smoke bomb down on the ground in front of me. So I just pull one off my belt, drop it, a cloud of smoke goes up, and I go into the bushes... And then I'm going to sneak all the way up the bushes and I'm just going to like peer out at her from like a little bit of a distance. Tilla, you're pretty confident there were no kids with this bandit group, but you watch as a small child, roughly maybe 10, 12, pulls out a smoke bomb the second she locks eyes with you and vanishes from sight, disappearing. Uh, Bree, could I please get you to rely on your skills and training? Tilla, Mm -hmm. could you please assess a situation for me to see how successful... Lily is at avoiding your detection. Sure. First roll of the night. Ah, uh, six. Six is not See, so great. I told you, I used my good roll already. <laughs> Excellent. Best one. Uh, eight, success with consequences for Tilla. Tilla, you watch as this child ducks into the bushes. I mean, <laughs> she looks like she she thinks that she is some master assassin. She darts from <laughs> shadow to shadow, hiding herself in the bushes. I mean, it would be really impressive if you couldn't see her doing this. <laughs> and as she gets close and pops her head out of the bushes, I mean, you you know that you can see her. You don't get the sense that she has noticed that you've caught her, though. At this point, <laughs> she she seems convinced that she is hidden from sight. Whereas, I mean, you just sort of look down to the right and you can see a little foot poking out from the bush. <laughs> She's not very well hidden. But it is a bit suspicious behaviour to have a uh, to have someone just throw a smoke bomb down. As Lily gets really close, Dragon, would you like to describe it in a bit more detail what Tilla looks like? How old she is, what kind of features she has, if there's any significant items that she's wearing that might identify her, um, things like that. I did a very quick intro for your character in terms of appearance, but can you take us through what Tilla looks like? Uh, so Tilla is probably a, a young girl, probably about the age of 15, 16. Um, very, wearing a very, like, as you said, a sandy colour robe. Um, nothing too striking about her. She would probably pass a briar in a crowd and you wouldn't really notice her. Um, the only real major identifying factor, probably, would be the little beads in her hair. Yeah, which are almost like an amethyst purple, right? I think we had them as a very, like, a crystalline shiny purple. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And um, Tilla has braided hair too, almost a little bit similar in style to the Water Tribe uh, hair. It's like much, so so her hair's sort of pulled back quite long, right? I think it's like down mid-back from memory from yeah. the description you gave. Yeah. And then she's got the braided hair in the front. For podcasters, so she's got two braided um, – I just punched my computer. Uh, she's got two <laughs> braided um, – 
uh, what would you call them? Like down the side of her face, two braided, two braids down the side of her face. Braids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bound <laughs> bound you're with. Word plat, by the way. Plat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I mean, you could have jumped in any time, but you waited till after I no, embarrassed I myself. No, I wanted so. to see you dig yourself a massive hole first. If this is if this is the hole I die in, then <laughs> I lived a good life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> two, two plaits. Holes to be in. <laughs> exactly. Um, each bound with uh, two purple crystalline beads, um, and then her hair is sort of like pulled up as well. There's uh, two plaits coming together, tied down the middle, uh, down the back of her head as well. But um, yeah, as, as you said, sort of 15, 16. Um, and in terms of footwear, did you want to go for the classic no soles on your shoes that most earthbenders wear, or did you want to go for kind of a bit more? Uh, no like souls. padded shoes, no soles. Perfect, excellent. She's got the classic uh, earthbender, uh, just the top of the shoe. Um, Till you just you just look down and see this child hiding in the bushes. I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna stick out my tongue out the side of my mouth, and I'm gonna be like working on like a little trap, and then I'm just you're just gonna see it like be pushed out of the bushes <laughs> in front of you. <laughs> what what is the trap? Is it like a little snare, and you like slowly yeah, like push the it, rope out? <laughs> yeah, so it's not like a rope, but it's, it's kind of like um, I've essentially put together like a smoke bomb with like a little trigger that if you step on it, the smoke will pop up into your face. So I've just like pushed that slowly out in front of. Her. Um, I mean, you look down. It's a pretty well constructed trap. Could you roll me a, I'm going to say skills and training, just to see if you recognize the level of skill, things like that. Uh, just, is this for me? Yeah, for you, Tilla. Could you roll I me a skills, skills and training? Because this kind of falls under your skills and training, given where you've come Absolute from. success. Ten, absolute <laughs> success. Um, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Tilla, this is very expertly made. For, for a young child, Whoever this girl is, she seems to be a very impressive craftsman. Not, I mean, the quality is similar to the smith uh, that you have back in the town of, uh, I'm not going to say the name of the town yet because I think that's your your secret trivial, but back in, back in your hometown, not too dissimilar from the smith there um, who has been able to create wondrous devices, including a collapsible sail for the, uh, for the sand boats, for the sand skippers. Um, very, very expertly done. Very micro, micro work, very tiny work. But I mean, the smoke bomb was very impressive. It's just a shame her stealth wasn't quite up to the quality of the uh, of the gadgetry that she's wielding. Mm. But, uh, I don't really know what I'm meant to do here. I just meant it's, to it's up to you. I mean, you can, you <laughs> yeah. can pretend that you haven't seen her just like step over the trap and keep going. You can confront her. You, you can, can pick it up and look at it. Yeah, you've got it's, it's <laughs> so whatever you whatever you want to do. It in yeah. more detail, it looks like it's got like a little pedal, kind of like a kick drum, kind of little pedal. So if <laughs> you stepped on the pedal of it, then a whole puff of smoke would come up in your face, essentially. So <laughs> you can either choose to step on it, you can pick it up, you can walk past, you can look at me. I'm peering out at you in the bushes. <laughs> like, can I uh, possibly like using like sandbending? push it backwards, like towards Lily. 100%. And then press it. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> and then press it. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna take your skills and training role from before as part of this, because it's all one fluid motion. As you use the sand to lift it up very slowly, get a bit of a look, get an understanding of how it works. And then what essentially the way you kind of sand bend, because because this is kind of the first time describing bending, I'll give you a bit of an example for describing that way. You've got like an example to drop on for the future, but you like turn your front foot to the left a little bit, causing the ground in front of you to collapse into grains of sand. You slowly get them to flow over the top of one another. Lily, you watch this from inside the bush. The smoke bomb trap just flows towards you, and then a little finger of sand comes up and presses it right in front of your face. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say the middle finger comes up and presses it right in front of your face <laughs> as the smoke bomb detonates in front of you. Um, Tilly, you're just standing on the very edge of this. Lily, you are engulfed in smoke. Okay. I'm like coughing, like spluttering. I am obviously like stumbling out of the cloud and I just kind of turn it to her. I'm like, what the heck? That was so rude. How did you see that? That was... Oh. You just, you ruined my bottom smoke bomb. 
<laughs> Sorry, I was reading that from chat. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I like no, it. I like think it. I think it is now canon. That's what they're called. Yeah, it is. It does seem like the name Lily would use to describe the smoke oh, yeah. bomb. I gotta say. Absolutely. I mean, nice try, but maybe just a little bit harder. How could you see me? What are you, a master spy? I mean, maybe. That sounds awfully suspicious, madam. I think I have to take you to the authorities. You're more than welcome to. Okay, come along, and I just grab your hand and start dragging you. <laughs> In a cheerful way. <laughs> uh, Lily and Tilla, it's a five minute walk, a cheery walk down the pathway towards the village. Kiko, you're currently sitting at this, um, uh, next to the, the, the village well, desk set up in front of you, notes scribbled. Um, at the moment, the notes are pretty sparse. There's one note that you actually said you took last time, which was learn what the word dowry means. Um, <laughs> that's all that's written in your notes at this point. <laughs> uh, um, I would uh, uh, beg to differ. I I took so many notes from that session. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Apologies for podcast listeners. He's showing the screen of his phone, which is blurred out, but does have text on it. I can confirm. Um, I you can't confirm as to the content. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, Kiko, you, you watch as Lily drags another person down towards you, a, a girl roughly 15, 16 maybe, not too, not too far off your own age. Um, but she doesn't... I mean, her, her clothing, she's dressed far too nicely for someone from this village like she's not just wearing like farmhands robes or or loose fitting robes like these are layered of very very nice make and material the the clothing looks to be yeah very well constructed and she has a bit of a bearing about her someone who is almost like walking on the balls of their feet ready to, to run or to dash at any moment um and as lily walks her up and stands in front of you i hand back over to uh, to lily kiko and tilla Like, I'm just uh, shuffling my papers again, just one note, <laughs> densely written. And I was like, hey, Poppy, you've come back. Hey, found a friend. The Gimme was awesome, by the way. Good interview of that one there. Learned plenty of things about the town. Yeah. Lots of did, good notes. Is did, that you, did you like his marking I gave him? Yes. <laughs> what was that? The, um, remember she, rubbed soot, she rubbed soot in his yeah. face. <laughs> Yeah, you went you, you mufasid him, that's right. <laughs> mufasid him. I didn't know that was an adjective, but it works. <laughs> mufasid. What was the name of it was But it wasn't Mufasa who did it, it was the monkey. What was the monkey? Simba. Simba. Rafiki. Right. You got Rafiki. Rafiki, yeah. Rafiki. Rafiki does it to Nala Rafiki Rafiki Graffiti. Who... Rafiki Graffiti. I think we've got it right there. Oh, okay. there it is. Rafiki. Um, <laughs> but yeah, okay. So awesome. I didn't touch this lady, but I think she might be dangerous because she. Um, I mean, you look as Lily's holding her hand. <laughs> <laughs> I like pull out a with the same charcoal hand. <laughs> I pull out a bit of water from my side. I'm like, mm, check this one over here. I'm looking, scanning your face for any charcoal or anything. Like, no, nah, nothing to wash off. No, you're clean. Okay, she hasn't got you. Actually, wait, what turn do around. you mean I haven't got her? She blew a bomb up in my face. I'm just walking around here now. Fault, like, nah, general dirt, but nothing that a bit of like, you know, you can't just scrub out there on the washboard. Bit of sand, like, Kiko. Nah, bit of sand on her. Bit sandy. Bit sandy. Ah, are you one of them sand benders, I see? Hmm. How do you deal with that? How do you get out your shoes every morning? Just bend the sand out of your shoes. What about your pockets in your hair? Do you bend that out or do you have to brush it out? How do you get the sand out? How do you think we get it out? Good question. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I'm going to grab Tilla's foot and try to take her shoe off. Uh, she, I mean, it's just the top of the shoe. There's no... So you just, you just <laughs> lift it, it just slides up her leg. I didn't know that straight away. Oh, so yeah. as I do that, I'm like, ah, oh, it just falls out the bottom, Kiko. For for oh. Tilla's for Tilla's reference, Ki, Ki, uh, Brandon, could you describe what Kiko looks like a little bit? Because we've got the artwork, but if could you give a quick overview of what Kiko looks like as well? 100%. Sort of early 20s, between 20s, 20. 20 between 20 and 25, saw that area there, I figured it out just yet. We'll get to that later on. He's getting older um, every so session. He yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, was 1920 yeah, last time. I think it was like 1819, now he's 1920. <laughs> no, roll the tape. This is where you roll it back and prove me wrong. But anyway, 100%. Uh, <laughs> 100%. But in, in a demographic that's below 30, um, shave sides, hair <laughs> yeah, up a little bun like me, just cut the sides off. 
It's not tall, but it's tall, slim, but muscular still, water tribe. It's got a bit of an air of like, hey, this guy's, you know, he's not all goody two shoes, maybe. I don't know. Cool dude. Cool dude. You know, have you got a, have you got a sick tat? It's got sick tats, bro. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. Because you've got you've got the Probably. bone earrings. You've got bone um, fish hook earrings as well. I think we drew on your character. Yeah. Right. Mm. I was trying to look for like uh, ivory earrings, like, t- like tattoos for water tribe, and I wasn't sure if we could find anything in person. I'll come up with some. I'll come up with some. The, the, yeah, I'll just what I'll do is I'll um. There's a whole bunch of um, uh, Inuit tattoos because the water tribe are based on the Inuits of North America. I'll just use um and, and Alaska. I'll use some of the Inuit tattoos for the for the shoulders no i i mean if you want a face tattoo you can yeah. have one otherwise i'll go for the shoulder tattoos and we'll we'll base it off the original culture that was um used to help create them 100%. I guess yeah. Black I this would be really like good that. at tattooing because they can just like bend the ink under the skin so, oh, it's genius uh, i can't i can't talk about that this yeah carry on I, love, I, love, <laughs> I just read like Palikia's comment. It's like Wait. He, he, every session he has is year. It's lucky it's a short campaign. <laughs> 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 yes. Short. Yeah. Short, indeed. <laughs> so far. Okay, perfect. That's that's a good that's a good description of uh, of Kiko for for Tilla's benefit. Yeah, I mean as as Lily like basically gestures for Tilla to sit down on the on the chair in front of this interview table. Tilla, I mean Kiko. I, is this really the authorities? This guy's like pretty young to be an authority. I mean, you are too, but you know, you know why you are allowed to, to do what you're doing or why you're doing what you're doing. But and this is a water tribe person. What's he doing in this Earth Nation village? I'm gonna really go in charge here because <laughs> no offense or anything, uh, but the notes and the questions don't really seem to add up. You know what? <gasps> Completely cool. Um, what was your name again? Sorry, Tilla. Tilla. You know, it makes sense completely. Everyone looks at me, young dude. Guess what? What authority has he got? But guess what? I'm part of Team Avatar, lead investigator uh, for this scene. So it's yeah, you know, not a lot of people believe it. Believe it or not. And Crazy. cool dude. That's damn straight. I'll give you a little fist bump, just a. And cool dude as well. You look at your fist, which is now what covered in charcoal. <laughs> I think at this point I'm water. covered in charcoal because of the smoke bomb. The smoke bomb, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As you like cough a little cloud of smoke. Cough <laughs> a little cloud of smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Team Avatar. And then I just get my water in my hand and just like whoosh, over Poppy's head, just wash off all the soot or anything on there. I like, shake like a dog. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Dynamic duo, we're a team. You should meet the other guys. Like they're part of this investigation as well. But I hope that helps bolster your confidence in Team Avatar. So you're part of Team Avatar. And sorry, uh, who are you again? Ah, uh, Kike. And she is Bobby. The best. Sorry. For your that benefit, too. for your benefit, Dragon. Um, Bree has had Lily give a fake name at this point because she's a street kid who doesn't want to reveal her identity just yet. So that is going to get confusing. Um, for, for, just okay, pretend, I pretend. That. perfect. So on the overlay, it's Lily, but everyone knows me as Poppy. Yep. <sighs> this is a Poppy playtime, and you'll remember it. Yeah, so. Poppy playtime. <laughs> Love so, it. No, no, red gas here. Mm. <laughs> what was the bandit name that someone gave me the other day? Itty bitty bandit or something? Itty bitty bandit. <laughs> yeah. No, that's so cute. So you, you two are really part of the Avatar team. 100%. What are you trying to instigate, lady? Yeah. Nothing. Why, why are you Just asking questions? questions? We're the investigators here. What are you doing here? Get my notepad out. I'm trying to solve my own problems. How are you? Answering a question with the question that you just answered, I see. Very interesting. He writes down. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you, you probably could ask for some form of um, some form of evidence or identification. I mean, you you've got identification that you could show to to assert your your right to be investigating this dragon if you wanted to. You've got, I mean, Tilla has a uh, a very real, tangible object that uh, that she can show to prove that she is here under official investigation. Can I assess the situation? Yeah, okay, definitely. While Bree's doing that, Tilla. Hmm. 
Look, I'm here under very important business. If you'd like to see the proof, then you're more than welcome to. But I really need to see some people in charge, if you don't mind. I think, you know what? I completely understand. Like, rules, bureaucracy, we get it. Like, we're Team Avatar here, we're all about bureaucracy. Let's, we should go see our other team members here, and they might help clear some things up. What do you think, Poppy? Should we go see the other guys? Um, look, okay. Do you want to know, like, who's in charge of, like, the investigation thing that we're doing? Or do you want to know, like, who's in charge of, like, the town? What investigation are you doing? Well, we're trying to figure out what's happening around the town. People keep stealing stuff. Yeah. Fingers in the night. People in shadows, in trees, in forests. I'm sorry, what? Fingers? Fing sticky fingers. Yeah. In the night. Nick and oh. Stuff. So, stealing? Yeah. That too. It's the Among same other thing. Things. But they've also been very creepy. Not normal. Usually people who steal stuff, they don't want to be seen. They don't want to be creeping on people. These, hmm. They've been a lot of, a lot of, lot of suspicious activity, I would say. Kiko, should we be telling her all this? Yeah, maybe we shouldn't. Are you? <laughs> what team are you on? Uh, my own. And do you have a cool name for your own team? I'll sink you in a hole if you don't understand. That's, That's a very a long, long name. name. That's not very <laughs> No one's going to remember that. Yeah, you can't put that in a shirt. No. Uh, oh, Why would you put that on a shirt? Oh, Why wouldn't you put your name on the shirt? In a hole. You say hi. Oh, no, nah, you can't do it. Can't even call acronym. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of questions from you, Tilla. Like you're looking for people of importance and of charge, of course. We're not in charge of the town, so we can't help you there. But like, could you, you take me to for? them? We could point you in the right direction. Yeah, we could take you to. Um, it wasn't Toka. It was God. Do you remember her name, Poppy, the lady? The old lady. Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna say that as a no. I, I, to, be <laughs> to be fair, I, to be fair, Dad, you do you remember her name? <laughs> to be fair, um, you were literally no. just talking to this woman in game time. Out of game time, yeah. it's been a week. Uh, Zulu. 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 Julie. No, Julie. I'm just gonna say while they are conversing, Tiller has just like slowly raised her hand to her head. <laughs> So in like the, the oh my gosh, what, is, what am I doing with these idiots? That's fair. Uh, um, while that's can I going, use my yeah. case in the joint question quickly from the assess yes, situation? Yes, of course you can, because you, you got a four on the assess situation, but you still get your case in the joint. What would you like to know? What on Tiller's person is the most valuable or interesting thing to me? You catch a bit of a glimpse as Tiller raises her hand to her head in exasperation. As the robe that she's wearing kind of pulls up and, and a, a little spot opens up you can see what looks like a very official looking badge pinned to the inside of her coat wait does she have a badge of authority maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe no. is that her flavor maybe she has the badge of authority who knows who knows is it Oh, that's so good. Yeah, is it, is it normal? No, is it just... it's a legit badge of authority this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not broken like yours was. <laughs> let's, let's jump to Ted and Jed, who have been waiting very patiently to not discover anything new. Um, as we jump back over <laughs> with Ted and Jed, you guys were currently chatting to um, Toka. Uh, you basically ascertained that there was a strange, almost like a gravel-like disturbance of the earth behind his house and a long line leading back towards the hills. Um, he claimed that he was overpowered by some sort of spirit who was earthbending um, and that some things were uh, stolen from around the farmsteads nearby. Nothing was stolen from his house. He fought them off. Um, but if he'd been in his prime and it had been real people, he would have had no troubles fa facing off against these people, which means it has to be a spirit yeah. if he was unsuccessful. Um, and That's Jed, right. you had just taken a look at his weapon at Guan Dao, which is essentially like a, a curved scimitar on a long spear. Um, and the tip of it was... Uh, lined with or, or um, adorned with these bright red coloured feathers, which you had figured out were from a ember hawk, which is what the Fire Nation often use to send messages. And you were currently looking at the uh, looking at the one down. Uh, yes. Um, do you have your armor here, or did you? 
return that. It's, uh, the armor is never mine to own. I just, I just, we borrow the armor. We, 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 we borrow the armor out? Yeah, but the weapon, uh, because it was uh, a gift, uh, I, I was allowed to keep the keep my guanda. Which, who, who was it gifted from? Because it's very nicely made. Well, uh, we had a delegation come from the Fire Nation uh, a couple of years back, before all of this stuff with the Avatar, when uh, when we thought Yun was the Avatar, and well, we, we we were on guard duty for this delegation to arrive, and we did an exemplary job. A uh, group of uh, bandits belonging to the uh, the Fifth Nation attacked, and. We were able to fend them off. It was our, our keen use of bending and uh, my unparalleled skills with the Guandao that I was uh, personally awarded a, uh, a fire forged, a steel forged blade for my Guandao, as well as the, uh, the feathers of a firehawk. That it is such a beautiful piece. Um, would I know if badger moles have a cute sense of smell? Uh, that's a very good question. Could I get you to please? I'm gonna say push your luck as an air nomad, unless you've that's a no. unless you've specifically been kind of like researching or oh no no we'll take a... it we'll take it though. <laughs> what did you roll? It hasn't come through just yet. I, Give it a second. I got a nine. Nine, Jed. You're pretty certain that a creature that lives underground without the ability to see would probably have very very enhanced hearing and smell as well as some sort of auxiliary sense with vibration i mean if it's anything like other types of subterranean creatures the whiskers are going to be particularly good at picking up vibration awesome that's what so, you know my, yeah okay so my th thought is <sighs> Ted, do, do we think it's a, a badger mole that's just a young badger mole that's just stealing food? Can I can I assess the situation? Yes, you can. What are you kind of looking for? I'm curious what you... Doesn't matter, it's a four. It's a four. Um, I, Ted, I mean, could be spirits. <laughs> You're starting to come around. <laughs> I mean, there's no evidence of it. In fact, there's a lot of evidence against, but I mean... Toka seems well, convinced. Maybe Toka's right. Yeah. I, I don't think he is. But he could be. I, I don't think he is. But he could be. Look. If it was spirits, do you think that they would like leave a trail? Or trail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We think someone was just towing out there. My bad. Yeah, we just thought someone was digging. Yeah, we don't I, I don't there. think you've rolled a single successful check for this investigation so far. Uh, no, we have not. You've, you've rolled successful <laughs> things for like peripheral questions, like can badger yeah. moles smell? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, how big is a badger mole? We know that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, important questions, isn't it? I, uh, it's a question. Um, certainly a question. Toko kind of nods a little bit and goes, I told you, spirits. And he said only food's been taken, right? Like, that's. Well, food was taken from the farms, but they tried to go after some of my weapons. Spirits. Spirits get hungry. For Spirits weapons. Get hungry. You, are, you are correct. The weapons that have. I'm going to say Ember off the bat, Hawk. as air nomads uh, and you're close understanding spirits, you don't even need to roll for this. You know that spirits don't normally eat, eat steal, food, and eat yeah. human food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not normally. No, no they, they, just, they just don't. So it went after the weapons that had the maybe, fire. Maybe there was hawk, a spirit and, and people. Cool. Maybe it was two things. Two things can be true. Okay, so we're just gonna... Okay, we're going... I think this is enough time we've spent here. This has helped our investigation. It's opened up a lot of avenues for us to explore. We're <laughs> gonna go back. Should we report and... back with Kiko and Rose? You're going to run out of flowers any session now. I have no, he, 60 he, flowers he, ready. Don't worry about that. <laughs> 20 is all of them. I have other flowers. aliases I need to use. <laughs> <laughs> Start pulling up the scientific name, so don't you worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Build an engine. <laughs> um, I think we go back and just discuss with the group uh, what we have found. So they are in the loop. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. 
Perfect. With that, Ted and Jed, you make your way back. And that's perfect timing as you arrive back in the village. We have now caught up the two timelines. You see Lily and Kiko talking to an unfamiliar Earth Kingdom girl. Seems to be chatting away. She's currently like face palming. She looks like she's really like having a bit of a frustrating conversation with Kiko and Lily, who are um, having a bit of a frank discussion. You can see Lily is a bit wet um, and there's like charcoal on the back of her robes and Kiko seems to be looking down at his notes a bit confused. I, I like nudge um, Jed. Mm-hmm. Have they just yeah. had a fight? I don't know. I'm really confused about what's happening here. Why is she so dirty? <laughs> Why is she wet? We've been gone <laughs> for not that long. What, what's yeah. happening? Ted and Jed, hey, you guys came just at the right time. That's crazy. How are you guys? Oh, yeah, good. We, we found some information. How are you guys going? I'm you assuming like you two are the other part of this... Team Avatar. At Team Avatar. That's, Team that's, Avatar. That, also, they're still working on the name. Yeah, you might want to <laughs> change it up a little bit. Nah, it's better than the, other one that was, the other one wasn't going to stick, so we, tra- we were thinking this one, but... This one will stick. It's it's perfect. It's short, two words, three syllables, everything you want, and I trust me guys on this one here. It's you guys four syllables. It's four time. syllables. <laughs> <laughs> Team Av... Uh, uh, <laughs> um, not, not, not sure if that's how that works, but okay. It's, it's open to debate, it's fine. Um, anyway. Um, it's one hell of a debate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was did you, did you guys have a fight or something? Like, why is. Yeah, what happened? Why yeah. is Poppy wet? Um, actually, you guys came at a really good time. You need to arrest the lady. Why? She threw a bomb at me and it exploded, and now I'm really dirty. But how Kiko I, tried to wash me. How do I check from? if that's a true? He succeeded. Or not. Um, I... excuse me, that was your own bomb that you made. Uh, okay, that I didn't say that you made the bomb. I said that either. you threw it at me and it blew up in my face. Technically, there everything was no I have said is true. There was no throwing. It casually sauntered over to you. And. Well, I was there, bomb of yours, just in the street. Just, yeah, I'm a fan of it, but just... I right. was practicing my traps. And... Well, it looks like you have a lot more practice to do. Okay, it wasn't me that made it go <laughs> wrong, it was her. But a good trap doesn't go wrong, no matter what. Hey, it worked. Mm. Excuse you all. In her defense, it, it was a brilliant trap. No, it didn't work. Next, so. next time, don't do it right in front of the person you're trying to trap because that kind what of becomes mean? counterproductive. I smoked well, straight away trap. and I was hiding. Okay, but <laughs> but you did that to yourself. Like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I can't, like, pretty I much what it so she's just she's covered her eyes. She's like, well, I can't see you, so <laughs> logically, I can't see them. They can't yeah. see me. You can't see me. <laughs> Ted taught me this. <laughs> yeah. Look, it was a good trap, but execution could just use a little bit of work. I shouldn't yeah, well, execute anyone. Your, right. your your face could use a bit of work. Okay. Okay, okay, what's <laughs> happening now? This Children. is derailed. This is devolved. Elders, help us out here, please. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, boy. You guys are clearly like 20 years older than this, right? Like, you got. You, okay, you probably had Okay, you okay, okay. okay. Calm down. Jeez, Wait, how old are you? You're really pulling the old card, right. aren't you? 20s something? 20. I thought you said I'm, you were I'm mid 30s, thank you. So, this, this guy's name is Old Men. Um, As she points to Ted, Archie's character. <laughs> <laughs> what did I call Jed last time? There was cool dude, old man. The brother. Did I just call you the brother? I don't yeah. think you gave him a nickname. I think it was just the brother. Old man and the brother. <laughs> so this is old man and this is his brother. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> They're old, but they're kind of stupid, so we just have them around for like bodyguard protection. Oh, Kiko's a real plane here. 
Yeah, so, yeah. Kiko, what did you find? Let's just, this, this is hurting me, so let's just continue. Well, I had a good chat with Gimme. Wanted to say Gimli so hard there, but I held it back. Had a very good chat with Gimme. Uh, basically, he let me know that uh, this all happened about a week ago. Um, chatting with him for a while. Really nice dude, by the way. I've taught him how to do this really, like, water tribe. Like, give me some skin. Freaked me out a little bit about the skin thing, but it's fine. So he got through that whole weird part there. But he said, like, he just saw some weird stuff happen about five days ago, um, <laughs> two days after the first report. Uh, he saw um, some people in the forest. Something about that. I'm reading from my notes. I'm very bad at writing notes. It's like, okay, yada, yada, yada. Um, there was a fragment of dyed brown cloth that was in the forest. So that doesn't really seem like a spirit thing. Yada, yada, yada. Um, the door. Do spirits wear shirts? I, I asked that question. That wasn't him. That was me, by the way. We have to figure that one out. Um, and then his cousin lost like six sacks of vegetables. So uh, I'm ruling out spirits. Um, but we need to look for someone who has a brown shirt so far and hides them. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you want to just narrow as, that down? As, just have a quick look around. As Kiko says that. <laughs> We all turn and look at Tilla. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we do need her right now. <laughs> anyway, the, 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 I don't know what the trial's called after that. Okay, cool. So what? we spoke to the old crazy man. Yeah. Uh, he just said that a lot of food has gone missing. Yeah. We're, it's been made, uh, only food, and then they something attacked him last night. But they were going after his weapons. But they had like f like a certain type of feather on them, and I think they were going after the, either the weapons or the feather. I think it's a badger mole, just like a small badger mole, like maybe about yay big, just like could be. But if badger moles wear shirts, how? Uh, well, is it a shirt or is it a sack, like a piece of fabric off a sack? Need to ask him that question. You're right, Lily. Um, as they're like talking, I'm gonna like circle around Tilla, like looking at her shirt and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm also gonna attempt to pickpocket her and take the badge. Uh, I rolled a seven, so yeah. As you reach, I pull up, it off. <laughs> as you reach up to try and get the badge, well, no success with consequences. So it means like you might be successful uh, in getting it. Says, it says. On a hit, you pull it off and vent your frustrations, clear fatigue or conditions equal to your survival. If you have no fatigue, mark growth. On a 10 plus, you also gain a windfall, a boon or opportunity. So I pull it off. You pull it off, but not unseen. <laughs> it, that. it says I pull it off. So I just don't get the windfall boon. So the, the way it kind of works, right, is you're like, as you reach in to pull out the... Because the way it kind of works is success with consequences. There's always like a... Uh, an added thing that happens that might not have been what you originally intended. In this case, it is the fact that this badge that Tilla has tucked into her robe is very high up in front of her chest. Oh yeah, I'm short. Right, as she's like <laughs> looking down at her. Like, for you to like reach around and try and steal it. Like, the, 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 like the, I, re I respect the dice rolls, as you know, but we still have to fit in with the laws of physics. And like, I thought she was sitting down though. No, she, she never said she was uh, sitting down. She's very clear about that. <laughs> Lily, as you, as you go to try and take this from behind her, you like, have your arm like around she's got like her arms i'm guessing at this point maybe crossed or still got yeah. like her head like on her thing it's very hard to like, reach around and as you like sort of get underneath her elbow you like grab onto the badge but as little as tilla lowers her arm it like pulls the badge off but she bumps into you and looks down as you pull the badge free and look down and then look up at her eyes as she's looking down at you holding the badge uh tilla you watch as lily essentially steals your badge from inside your your robes we all do this as well. Ma'am? Sorry, what was that for you? What's this, Miss Ma'am? Uh, you, you are watch, a secret spy. You watch as Lily holds up. Tilly, would you like to describe the badge that Lily is now showing to the whole group, including yourself? Um, so it's probably... Oh, I don't know how to describe how big it would be. That's like roughly the size of palm. Big. Like... Yeah, so maybe like just like... Yeah, 10 just centimeters about, from uh, this, width to yeah. width. Maybe 15... Link. If it's a problem, like that would be very, very big in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it would be massive in your hand. 
Ten um, centimeters. So yes, That's not that big. That's pretty big. No, no, yeah. <laughs> that's that's bigger than average. You watch <laughs> as the badge just unrolls like a really long whip. Uh, no, the um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's made of metal. I'd say probably at this point, it, yes. I'd agree. It's probably made of metal. It is and very then, nicely made. Yeah, so till you go. Uh, probably, yeah. So made of metal, and then inlaid within it, um, a bunch of very like clear, like yellowy orange sand. And you can see in the very centre a symbol of what looks like a large stone, almost plateau, rising up out of the desert, and it has deputy across the top, embossed in metal. Do you mind? That is very important, and I don't want others touching it. That's the. I want to know who you are. (laughs) Yeah, pretty young to be a deputy, wouldn't you say? Whether or not I'm a deputy is none of your concern. Quite frankly, you just tried to steal from me. I wouldn't say try, I'd say successful, and I throw it to Kiko. Jesus! Um, (laughs) While you throw it, I shift my foot and a pillar of sand just comes up and intercepts it. Oh, you guys, uh, I'll get you you to roll skills and training, rely on skills and training, but I'd say this is going to be successful. Ted. I just want to take a couple steps back. Yeah, yep. that's fair. <laughs> uh, can, I, can I just... I'm just going to, yeah. like... We have to just probably, walk back slowly. Probably best not to <laughs> assault the fuzz. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 11, absolute success. <laughs> you, just, you just, like, turn your foot the slightest bit. You guys watch as a section of the earth crumbles into sand, rises up in the shape of a hand, catches the badge, and then moves it over and hands it back to Tilla, all from these very subtle movements with her feet, which she then, like, lowers. She takes the badge back fixes it back onto her uh, her robe. Now that that's out of the way, who are you and what do you think you're doing? Not okay, no, no, no. We ask the questions first. Who are you and what are you doing? Yeah, we're Team Avatar. What's your team? We already told you who we are. Who are you? Hey, Ted, yeah, quite always... frankly, from what I've seen, I am seeing two children. One who doesn't know what he's doing. The other one who was quite literally a child, and then these two grown ass men who I'm quite sure don't even belong here. No, we're not here, we're not here. We're not here. <laughs> I will I will I will add as well, Tilo at this point you've spent enough time to know that Jed is also an airbender. Like Ted Ted is dressed in the classic airbender robes, you can see his tattoos, he's got a shaved head. Very weird to find an air nomad investigating a crime, and then even though Jed has grown his hair to hide his airbender tattoos, it's, you can still see the top of the triangle poking out from his forehead. <laughs> like, it's visible. And they were introduced to you yeah. as brothers, so, like, it's, you know they're both from <laughs> yeah. the nation. Like, you got a strong widow's peak, that's all it is. Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> it's a really blue shadow <laughs> um yeah no, it's, it's it is very weird like air nomads in your experience are uh, monks and spiritual people who come around and bless harvests on occasion i mean every so often they'll make their way stop over at your at your hometown to to stock up on rations before heading across the desert so you've seen you've seen flying bison and air nomads before definitely it is weird to have them here investigating a crime that's bizarre because I'd say at this point, it's pretty clear they're investigating something to do with this village. You've heard about thefts. This matches up with what you've actually been investigating as well back at your home village. Um, the description of what's been happening, mostly food being taken, matches up exactly. Figures moving through the forest. Um, even the dark brown robes. I mean, you know that the last outfits these this group were seen wearing um, were sandbender robes that they had stolen from the uh, stolen from a nearby settlement. I mean, if they're still wearing them, Matches up pretty nicely with what you know. Mm. Yes. So I'll ask you again. Who are you? What are you we, doing? We've told you who we are. What we exactly are you have we go, Poppy, Jed. We got Ted. <laughs> we got everyone here. <laughs> We're team Avatar. <laughs> now. We should... <laughs> okay, first of all, you heard our conversation. As a deputy, you should be able to figure out what we're doing. Yeah, but why are you not doing it? We asked you. Oh, money. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well. Got to get that cheddar. Yeah, okay. cheddar. You know, money, salary. Even that's what you guys are into. Salaries. Sort of like that. Like a dowry. 
Jack <laughs> like a dowry. You know, he's going to get money for doing a thing. Get a dowry. It's just how it is. No, no, I mean, not he's not wrong. He's not wrong. You get oh, wrong. Yeah, he's not, yeah, I guess he's not wrong. He's doing yeah. a thing. Yeah. I don't but, think you're allowed to call them things. No, getting married is a <laughs> thing. I've got the vote getting now. Getting married is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big thing. <laughs> big thing. Hiya. I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna waste my time trying to figure out what you guys are trying to do. All I oh, ask you is that you just give me <laughs> what you have, oh, and have. I'll figure it out myself. Don't have much, we, sorry. Don't have much at all. We have it's so much. All, yeah, all in here. here. Tiller, could you... Exactly. Tilla, could you roll me an assessor situation? Sure. These guys are broke. <laughs> These guys are <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> What was that? Sorry. Eleven absolute um, success. <laughs> Tilla. Um. So the way the way that um assessor situation works is you get to ask two questions, but I'll often give you a little bit. If I've called for it, I'll often give you a little bit as a first, so you can have a follow up question if you like. Um. I mean, this lot calling themselves Team Avatar. You do remember a messenger coming through the village in which you, the, the settlement in which you live, talking about Avatar Kiyoshi and Rangi setting up a brand new settlement on Yokoya Peninsula, the ruins of the old Avatar mansion, and looking for allies to come and help in their attempt to basically fix everything that's broken in the Earth Kingdom. Because there's a lot that's going on at the moment. All of the Earth Sages, pretty much all the Earth Sages at this point are dead murdered by one of their own, Jianzu, poisoned recently. Like, there's very few Earth Sages left. For 16 years, the world thought that this guy called Yun was the Avatar, and then it turns out he was and it was Kyoshi, and then he disappeared, and then suddenly came back and started murdering high-level Earth Nation officials, Fire Nation officials, before Kyoshi then took him out <laughs> in the ruins of the Avatar Mansion. Like, there's been a lot going on. Um, a task force was set up in Barsing, say, the Earth King took control of that from Avatar Kiyoshi when she went over to the Fire Nation to sort out a civil war there and the, the, the after effects of a civil war in the Fire Nation. And now, like, th there's a lot going wrong. And the Avatars put out a call for help. These guys calling themselves Team Avatar, you're pretty confident these are some of the people who've maybe answered the call to help the Avatar, which means that they've been sent here probably by the Avatar or by some of her people. Working with the Avatar could be a really good pathway forwards for you to achieve your further goals. And importantly, it looks like this group are missing a vital piece of a very important puzzle. They've been sent here to investigate a crime. You are getting the distinct impression they do not know <laughs> how to do how to this. Do it. Yep. <laughs> luckily, luckily, you do. <laughs> there is perhaps Thank a God. chance here. There, there perhaps is a chance here. More importantly as well, this group you've been after, you know that they potentially can be dangerous. If there were some people in between you and these potentially dangerous people, that could be handy to prevent you getting injured. <laughs> as well as that, as well as that, you have also access to someone who is clearly quite gifted at making technological devices, smoke bombs and traps. There's a waterbender. Some waterbenders can heal. That could come in handy. You don't know. You don't have Kiko can, but some waterbenders can heal. And there's also clearly two airbenders too. Airbenders almost never get involved in combat, from what you've heard. But then also, you've never heard of an airbender who's been like disgraced and kicked out of the air nomads before. Which Jed is real. More and more, you're getting the distinct impression that Jed <laughs> is not a welcome member of the air nomads anymore. Yeah. Um, Tiller, I mean, in the desert you have to use the resources available to you when they come along. You have to be able to adapt to survive. Mm. This lot, I mean, there's opportunity <laughs> here. If you, if, you, if you wanted it, there's opportunity here. These people could be helpful. You, they're, just, they're just missing some actual investigative abilities <laughs> to investigate a crime. If you wanted any follow-up questions, you could definitely ask them because you've got you got an eleven, which is an absolute success. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I have any questions. Um. Yeah, no, it's fine. That's okay. You can, if you think of one a little bit later, you can ask it. You, you we'll, we'll hold one for you. We'll hold one, hold a question for you. Sure thing. Look, from the sounds of it, you guys are trying to find something and doing a terrible job of it. Oh my gosh. 
They were doing a pretty good job. Isn't everyone trying to find something though? Yeah, like we can't stop not being philosophical. <laughs> Nah, yeah. There is an actual problem going on. Well, yeah, we know. That's why we're here. And you're doing a terrible job of it. All I'm saying oh, we, is yeah. that if you'd like... We just got here, thank you very much. I would be willing <laughs> to lend a hand. For how much money? Wait, is she paying us? Or, or was <laughs> 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 I was hoping you meant that way. Like, I don't She's want to pay hiring you. us, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's lending a hand. She's an intern. Yeah, um... Oh, oh, she's an intern. intern. I'm not hiring. Mm. Yeah, it's basically slave like... labor, but what they do in, like, business or something like that. But, uh, oh, in modern society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do it all the time in the Water Tribe. They just call it internship, and you can just make people work for free. It's great. But not forever. Gonna... I'm gonna walk up to Dilla and, like, hold up both of her hands and, like, look at them by... You could... We could borrow this one. Sure, let me grab my let me grab my knife. <laughs> <laughs> no cutting hands, guys. Yeah. We're not cutting anyone's hands here. We've, we've talked it. about this. <laughs> <Good. laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm surprised I wasn't there for that conversation and I don't want to know what sparked it. <laughs> but we'd appreciate um... both your hands. <laughs> wait, wait, hang on, she didn't offer both. She offered a hand. This yeah, one is more calloused, therefore I think this one would so be more useful. Off, so we chop off the other one if we don't need it. What's wrong with you? We're not chopping off hands. What is just... wrong with you? Oh, really? I'm not with him. We're in a, like a farming camp. Yeah, we're on the top end. I think we're too soft. You're right. Anyway, what would you do in a situation like this with a mystery of a... Uh, thieving something of a town with no resources. Where would you start? Just so we know that we're on the same page. Exactly. Give Where would time. I start? Looking at the most <laughs> Jed's, recent Jed's location. disappointed. <laughs> Jed's disappointed. So nothing new. <laughs> Where would I start? The most recent location it happened. That's Have good. you guys done that? Um, Ted and Jed, was that pretty recent? Yeah, I think you yeah, pretty recent. Pretty, pretty, we're already, already done that. Yeah, See, he's, pretty sure, he's pretty sure it's a spirit. But spirits don't wear shirts, do they? Or do Did they? Did you find any evidence that it could be a spirit, considering... You know. Um, Jed? I think it's a badger mole. <laughs> like I Seeing said, that it's... Hey. Like Seeing I that said. it's only taken food and that it attacks something that probably is its enemy by smell. As I was saying, he thought it was a spirit, but we figured out <laughs> that it wasn't. But you don't know what it is. No, that's just my like leading theory seeing that only food was taken, like nothing else of value was taken, like no tools or anything. But you said that there was recently what a try for tools or weapons weapons but it had like ember hawk feathers on it so i assume it was going after the ember hawk feathers seeing that they were i would say enemies as a predator i mean you as you say this out loud for the first time jed you think about this a little bit sense. more deeply yeah. just for a moment yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't really think there's many opportunities for ember hawks and badger moles yeah. to interact no, 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 in no, no. wild this, no 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 this is jed also working there at the same time i got this don't worry don't worry i know what i'm doing like, i've been the, sitting the more... on that for a session and a half no, 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 no. Like... i've known i've known because i'm like they just don't go above ground so why would they ever but i'm like no, no that makes sense ah they're do... borrowing ember hawks of course they just fly yeah, down no. into the badger mole holes and peck their anuses like we know that <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, a, you know, you go there? <laughs> because they pick up the the badger mole poo and they they like a, they're like shrimp. They're like the shrimp of the uh, badger moles. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, let's um, just let's just end that train of thought right there. That shrimp clean fish oh. tanks. So good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you do realize how ridiculous that sounds. Yeah, right? like the more I'm saying it, the more the more it's coming off as ridiculous. Yeah, Look, I'll be something, honest. Something that I didn't stays really study ground. that much. Yeah, it shows. 
Okay. Okay. We're we'll going. <laughs> With that, oh, Ted, and this, Jed, this Ted and Jed. Ted and Jed begin marching off. Tiller sort of like following along behind as they lead Tiller over towards um, Toka's house. Kiko and Lily, are you both coming as well? We're throwing hands. Let's go. <laughs> We're going out to that clearing of dirt and sand. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like fight club. <laughs> I'm going to go and find one of the other people that the lady pointed out to me last time for interviewing. Perfect. And Kiko, are you going with this group or are you going to hang out at your interview station? Office. Office. Kiko? You're Kiko. Oh, sorry. Oh, Christ. I <laughs> had a moment where I read chat for a second and that was the worst time to read chat. It looked like, wow, Kiko. My back. Kiko. Are you... Oh, my God. Um, professional stream. He read the part where it said there's three brain cells and he's like, where's mine? It's like, oh. yeah, 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 someone else is using it. Can I have it back? Thank you. Have I dropped it? Um, <laughs> Kiko. Yes, office. Okay. <laughs> okay. Lily and Kiko. So Lily's going to go find you someone else to interview. You're going to stick there. Let's stick with Ted, Jed and Tiller for the moment as uh, Lily heads off to go and find someone for you to interview. Ted and Jed, it only takes you two minutes to lead Tiller over to the back of Toka's house. Toka no longer seems to be there. It looks like he has left. Where he has gone, don't know at this point. But at the back of his house, Tiller, you can immediately see a long line of disturbed gravel and earth leading up towards the back wall of his house. There's a crack in the stonework that helps to basically hold up and, and form the uh, the back wall of this farmstead. Did you want to use that final? Because you had a you had a assessor situation question yeah, left over. Use, any... use that good roll on it. Did you have a question? Do you have <laughs> a question you wanted to ask? Because you got you, you've got a question if you want it. Ask if it was a badger mole. I will not be doing that. <laughs> Why not? Ask if, it's a um, spirit. Ask if it's a spirit. No. You can make a wish. Um. <laughs> We're not derailing this campaign that badly again. I'll let you know right now. If if your plan was to head directly into the Sea Wong Oasis, into the Sea Wong Desert, to try and find the whale spirit, um. You, you, there is there is a surprise waiting for you, Andrew, that I have specially set up if you were to try and derail Wait, this campaign now I too. Need to go there. I, that was not yeah, my plan, right? but now I need to go there. It's a special, it's a special <laughs> surprise just for you, Andrew. And trust me, I'm going to really enjoy it. The big stone is just a giant middle finger. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, you know in Holes, right, there's like the God's Hand mountain range? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I didn't need to go there before, but now I do, I guess. <laughs> There's nothing uh, there. It's boring as fuck. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's wants see. So you have that it's a bunch of disturbed uh, soil and gravel. Yeah. And then a giant crack in the back of the... Exactly right. In the back of his house. The the patch of disturbed gravel, um, it, it almost forms a line leading to the house and then heading back up into the hills. Um, Let's you let, let me ask... How how big is this like crack? Is it like large enough for someone to like stick their hand through or something? Not not large enough for someone to stick their hand through, but it definitely looks like it was created as a result of the earth underneath this building shifting and moving away, causing the wall to drop in the middle a little bit, which has created this crack. The crack has formed because of the strain and pressure on the wall. Maybe because the foundation is no longer as secure as it was before. Am I able to like use my earthbending to like yeah. see what has been like disturbed? Yeah, I would say you could probably use your earthbending to try and like almost turn the loosely turned earth into sand and move it away to see if there's like a tunnel or something like that left behind. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah. Absolutely. Could you please roll? I'm going to say this is more of a push your luck situation because you're doing some pretty advanced sand bending right here. Okay. Success with consequence. I got an eight. Fantastic. Eight is good. You guys, Ted and Jed, you watch as Tiller again c concentrates and focuses, holding her hands together, and then pushes and then pulls out again. And as she does so, the earth around her the disturbed gravel immediately crumbles into sand, which she moves and bends up over, forming a little sand dune on the side of the, the earth. Underneath, you can see clearly 
what looks like a tunnel that has been dug through the earth leading back up into the hills. Maybe about, I'd say probably a metre, maybe a metre and 20 tall and about the same width as well. Wide enough for a person to crawl through if they needed to. Or or a baby vaginal. Um, You can also see that that tunnel moves underneath the wall and has broken in part of the floor. I'm going to add on that, even though it's a success with consequences, Tilly, you're pretty sure earthbending was used to do this. And this matches very much with the modus operandi, the MO that you've seen back in your settlement as well. Bandits coming in from underneath, collapsing the floor and pulling out what they need. And then earthbending to to basically hide it again, to to Mm. refill back in. It looks like though they were disturbed partway through and they weren't able to fill in the tunnel that they dug. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like I'm on the right track, East. The only question is, are they still here? Or have they fled? No, they're not here. No. <sighs> not right here, they're, they're, dummy. They're not stupid questions, just saying. Because oh they'll think it's a serious question and answer. <laughs> There's, I, I jokingly <laughs> referred to Ted and Jed as the Brothers Dim last session, and um, <laughs> that name <That's> right. has stuck. <laughs> Look, we all have three. They had to live up to our name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Thank you. Here does not mean right in front of me. Here means in the general vicinity. Vicinity. vicinity you got this? I believe in you. I believe in you. An enemy. I don't believe in you. An enemy. Vicinity. Vicinity of the area. Not right in front of me. Yeah, look. Yeah, this is a very short tunnel. I don't know. Oof. The tunnel continues quite a ways no, back. No, like, I mean, height, like height-wise, height-wise, it's pretty short. Yeah, it would have to be someone crawling on their hands and knees. Or yeah. maybe using some sort of bending technique that allows them to move through the earth. <laughs> Vagimals. Right. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, I, th- you may well, have I think it was the vaginal now. Well, I th- whatever it is, I think it's that way through the forest. Um, You just are you waving? What are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> what? Evie. Oh. Thank you. For podcast listeners, uh, Archie's very adorable daughter has just made a quick appearance. The, it's the dwarf bandit! Quick get her. <laughs> <laughs> Um yeah, I think they're off in that direction through the forest somewhere. Um not sure. Not, not, not sure th- where exactly or what's happening, as, but that, as, that's what I think. As Jed's talking, you can see a young girl, probably uh, Lily's age or a little bit younger, has come up and is like pulling on Jed's uh, monk robes, asking for a <laughs> blessing, asking for a blessing from the uh, from the air nomads. Like, um, can I, can I have a blessing so my mum's crops grow really strong, and the spirits yeah. bless our house? Yeah, yeah, here, uh, here's no, a... No, not from, no, I want it from the airbender. As she points at Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Ted spends a bit of time, like, being like, I, I, I'll, I'll, sorry, Jed, I got this, I got this. And, like, <laughs> bends down and begins, like, whispering to the child. So, yeah, uh, I think they're that way. I don't know much more. I don't know what Perfectly Kiko and, and Poppy are doing, but, like, honestly, I think that's all that there is to this. We just have to go that way. Okay, at least you said something that makes sense. Joe, you know was funny. I... When I was writing this, I, I did not expect this to be like a hardcore investigation. This was like essentially <laughs> a tutorial so that I could easily bring in a guest character that we needed. And it would like, ideally, you were only going to spend 10 minutes in this village going like, oh, there's a trail. Let's follow it. Fuck me, you guys. Hey, <laughs> Fuck me. I want to put this out there. I said, uh, right at the beginning, there's a trail. Let's go that way. Then I <laughs> then think you, you may- then, then, No, no, no. Then you maybe roll for it, and you're like, oh, it just looks like someone heard the ground. And I'm like, well, I you guess someone just heard the ground. <laughs> got a one. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, look, I already knew what it was, but you're like, roll for it. I'm like, okay. So naturally, Poppy started robbing the town. When I started interviewing the townsfolk, it just... Two of, us, two of us rolled ones and we couldn't do anything about it because... The- <laughs> it's amazing. 
just amazing. So really, the DM derailed this thing. Oh, I don't think that's fair. <laughs> I accept no responsibility. Um, I mean, Tilly, you're pretty confident. Follow this track, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll track down your quarry. Um, probably best if you've got a full complement of people ready to go. I was about to get to that, Owen. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Look, why don't we round up the other two and then... Isn't, isn't Poppy right here? No, Lily's Poppy. Oh, I swear, Poppy. Wait, wait, no, no, no. Wait, wait, Poppy, Poppy. <laughs> no! <laughs> Another victim of the kitty snatcher from my bum. what's it called from uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Why don't we round up the other two and then follow the very obvious trail to whoever, whoever is pillaging the town. That's true. Let's just go get them. I'll wait here. Uh, it's, it's probably better if you go get them, because let's be honest. I don't know where any of them are. Oh my god. And then I just grab him and just start dragging him back into town. Perfect. Uh, as you are dragged back in towards town, uh, Lily, uh, you have headed out to go and lock down another witness for Kiko. As you make your way over towards the lumber yard, you quickly identify uh, the woman that you were told had also spotted the shadowy figures in the woods. Uh, she looks to be in her mid forties. Um, she's currently using earth bending to create this blade of stone, which she's using to cut the logs into position, um, essentially cutting off most of the, the twigs and smaller branches so they can then be put through the sawmill effectively. Um, she pauses as you approach, wipes a bit of sweat off her brow and turns towards you and goes, Um, are you all right, love? Can I... Uh, can I get you something? What are you doing out here? That looks really cool. How do you do that? The... With the locks? The the blade? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's nothing special. I just uh, create a thin blade of earth and stone and, and just use it to trim against the grain. I, I just... I, I mean... It's a bit How dangerous. How did you think thing. of that? Oh, I, I, not a technique I came up with. This was something that was taught to me by my father when uh, when he worked in the lumber yard. I think his grandfather, cool. his father taught him. Yeah. Wait, so you like ha you know your grandparents? That's cool. How, are you okay? What, what are you doing? Yeah. Here? Oh, sorry, I got sidetracked because that looked really cool and I really liked what you were doing. Um. Uh, did you see people trying to steal stuff? Yes, yes I did, uh, a couple of nights ago, when I was uh, out uh, working a little bit later. Now by a couple of nights, do you mean two? Or uh, are you being- Three or four. Three or four. Okay, so was it three or was it four? Um, We're trying to get a timeline together. Four, four nights ago. Four, are you sure? You don't very, sure. very sure. No, no, okay. very sure. Okay, so four nights ago you saw some people, and that's the last time that you've seen them personally? Yes. Sorry, I, I, why am I answering this? I, I, she, you can see she kind of like catches herself <laughs> for a moment and goes, um, why, why are you asking about this? Why aren't I? It's at this point you feel a hand suddenly drop on your shoulder, Lily, and as you look up you see Gimme standing there. Um, he smiles down at you and goes, no, no, no it's okay, um, they, they're, from, they're from the Avatar. Um, uh, Rangi and Kiyoshi sent them out to, to investigate. Um, this little one, she's uh, she's doing the preliminary questions, but there's there's questions in town. Um, the, the the attractive waterbender. Gimme man, gimme some skin. He like raise up my hand. <laughs> he high fives you very gently. <laughs> <laughs> He's quite muscular. He's not gonna go yeah. for a full <laughs> high five. Does a very gentle high five and goes. Um, yeah. Uh, if you if you head in. Uh, they're asking all sorts of questions. You know, just, just standard stuff. Um, there's another person with them too. Looks like a sandbender from the, uh, from the desert. Oh, she she's with not you? with us. We don't know her. She's not with you. Is she. I think. She, I think she somehow? wants to be. She knows that we're like really cool, and she knows that we're like working for the Avatar, and she just like really wants to be us. So maybe she's with us. But at the moment, she's not with us. We don't know her. Oh, is she? Uh, I mean, who, who sent her? Is she, is she an investigator or? I think she's a secret spy. Secret spy? He like smiles knowingly and then looks up and <laughs> winks at the uh, at the woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, she has this like fancy badge thingy that says like deputy, but deputy is just spy talk for spy. Oh, <laughs> she's a deputy from uh, from the Siwong Desert. That's what she's saying, but she's a spy. She stole it, probably. Um, I mean... Why are you asking the questions? So I'm asking the questions around here. Sorry, of, of course. And he smiles again and then looks towards when he goes, hey, Lena, you better go. Don't want to keep the investigator waiting. <laughs> so he looks down at you again and smiles. I hold out my hand to the lady. Okay, we have to skip now. She sort of like looks and raises an eyebrow and Gime nods <laughs> very, very like reluctantly. She just shakes her head and goes like, you would be very good friends with my daughter, I think. Um, all right. Let Do us you know skip. how to skip? Do I have to teach you to? I had to teach Gimme. He wasn't good at skipping. He uh, nearly threw himself off a bridge. No, I, I, it's funny. Gimme was such a good skipper when he was young. I remember him skipping around town in a little dress. And he watches Gimme goes bright red and goes, um, <laughs> I've got a, got things to do in the forest. <laughs> like shuffles off and she sort of chuckles after him. And Are you a goes. better air- earthbender than what Gimme is? Because Gimme was skipping and then he like made a rock come up and he fell over. Oh, I, I'm a much more controlled Earthbend in the Gimme. Uh, he, he's, he's pretty powerful, but um, the secret of Earthbending is having neutral ching, sometimes not acting. That's the secret. That's something Gimme still Sounds has to learn. like a pretty cool secret, but as long as you can do that and think about that and also skip, we're good friends. Come along. She nods and skips <laughs> like... Not not as uh, as an energetically as Gime did, but she does join in with a skip. Lily, yeah. as you as you bring this lady back, uh, as you bring this lady back to Kiko, uh, we'll, in, for the purposes of keeping the timelines all perfectly lined up, um, Jed and Tilla sort of begin heading back into the town because that roughly would be the amount of time required as you lead this woman down and sit her in front of Kiko. She smiles and nods to you, Kiko. She goes, "Hi, I'm I'm Lena." Um, I understand you're asking questions about what I saw. Uh, yes. Sorry, just quickly. Uh, does Kiko have any um, reaction to the fact that I'm making another person skip towards him? Good question. Yes. <laughs> he's uh, he's sitting there and he's uh, smirking. And as soon as he realised that Lena has noticed him, he's back to shopping the papers, like back to serious mode. Like. <laughs> Sorry, what's he like? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what, what was that? I just I. <laughs> it sounds like the Grinch. <laughs> Lena, Lena, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, welcome, welcome. Please sit down. Kiko, um, I am a chief investigator for Team Avatar. Uh, Kiko, uh, thank you very much for uh, coming over here for my associate uh, Poppy. Poppy, really appreciate you. Um, I'll keep this pretty pretty quick for us today, Lena. Um, I've just got a couple of questions. Um, first up, um, so your name again is Lena, last name? Uh, I, I don't have one. Is that something everyone has? No, that's completely cool. Just scratch that one. Don't worry about it. Um, Lena, what town are we in? Uh, this is Koru Village or Koru Settlement. Koru Settlement. Perfect. Okay, sweet. Um, uh, Lena, what's your favorite color? Um, I, I I quite like aquamarine. That sort of like bluey green color. I like aquamarine. That's a bonus point. The, like, like copper when it when it discolors. I quite like that color. This like what do they call it? There's a word for it. Ver ver verdigris. 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 Verdigris Verdigre? could be. I love that How do you color. Spell that? I wouldn't. <laughs> and guess what? I'm not really going to do it either. <laughs> just just say blue green. I quite like blue green. I am a fan of blue green. I'm uh, waterbender, as you can tell, and chosen well. Okay, um, just a quick one. Um, where were you the night things were being stolen? About four nights ago. Where uh, were you well, in the forest? It's, it's been a couple of nights things have been stolen. Uh, it depends. So the first night things were stolen was the night I first saw a disturbance. That was one of the farms out on the periphery of the settlement. Um, I was the last one at the lumberyard. I started a little bit later. My daughter had been a bit sick the night before, so I'd been up a bit late taking care of her. Um, she was... Uh, feeling a bit better that morning but we had a bit of a slow start so I offered to stay back and 
just finish off, make sure that I kept up with the, the workload that we needed, the, the numbers we needed. Um, mm. I was there, I would have been roughly 6, 6.30. And all of a sudden, you know that feeling you get when you're being watched, the, the sensation of, of the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. I, um, I look over at um, like the group coming over and I just look over at Tila. I'm just like, yeah, I know it. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I, I turned around and, and the, the, the sun obviously was, was setting by that point and I, I couldn't see anything at first and then I suddenly saw movement in the shadows. I, um, I called out and I heard a sudden crack of a, of a twig deep in the forest. I immediately um, earth bended up a, 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 a small protective wall um, just to be ready if I needed to, to defend myself. Um, it was silence for another, maybe, it's hard to say. I, time, I was, in a, I was a bit scared. Time felt like it was moving very slowly. It could have been a minute, maybe it could have even been five. But I, I mean, I, I didn't see or hear anything after that point. I called out again didn't see or hear anything and I was feeling pretty spooked at that point so I um I ended up moving back to the village pretty quickly I used um used uh, earth stepping to, to move quite quickly uh, do you know it, it's a technique where, where earthbenders like step and use the ground to sort of propel ourselves forwards um do we have a similar thing for water bending like running on water or something uh you've you've done ice stepping before where you've frozen the ice in front of you to help you run across uh an area but water yeah, stepping like not so much but ice stepping you've used yeah. sounds sounds a bit similar yeah same um, same but different and yeah, we do something yeah go on please uh, no no um i got back to the village called out um luckily gimme was awake um uh one of the other villagers as well um Artic, and we we headed out but couldn't see anything um and it was when we were out there looking around that um, we found a, a torn piece of fabric. Do you have the torn piece of fabric with you, by chance? No, uh, we gave it to uh, gave it to Zula. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's really helpful. Thank you very much. Well, you know, the, I think that takes over a lot of things. I love the fact that you've ever called Bird I'm glad that we have very similar color choices here and that's the second time I've heard about this, uh, yeah, a bit of brown cloth. Um, anything else I should know before I go? Actually, would do you know anything about a uh, point over towards Tiller? Like, has she been around here very long at all? She looks over at Tiller, shakes her head and goes, no, I've never seen her before. Okay. How that helps. Before but she's, goes, she's, like she's wearing, uh, I mean, I've been to, been to the, um, the Misty Palms Oasis, the, uh, the, um, Siguang Oasis. Um, okay. The deputies there, the the um, the Sandbender, um, like I guess they're like guards, I guess, but they do uh, like policing work essentially. They they keep order in the in the desert and and in the oasis. Um, that's what they wear. That's the 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 double layered robes. That's that's I I, 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 she, I, I mean I, I would I would assume that she is with them. Would you say that that color of her robes is the same color as the brown scrap of oh, cloth you found? Oh, no, 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 that's much lighter. Um, the, the, the scrap we found was a very dark brown, uh, almost like a dark dyed linen. No. Th is it? Okay. Oh, I was just wondering, like, is the Sea Wong Oasis, is it like just a bunch of sandbenders there or is it like a bit of a hub of different cultures there? Like, no, no, I, I, my airbender friends have referred to it as the multicultural hub of the desert. No, unfortunately, oh, before really? you guys have a chance to say anything, <laughs> Tilla is going to chime in. Tilla, how would you describe your home? It's the cultural hub. There you go. Even, <laughs> even, even Tilla knows it is the cultural hub of the desert. <laughs> multicultural hub of the desert. Yeah. Yes, um, it's carried on. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a very large settlement. Um, I'd say two, three hundred people from all... All nations. It's a. It's a. It's a. I mean, uh, she. She like immediately looks over at you, Tiller, and kind of like clearly is deferring to your your uh, <laughs> judgment, seeing that you are uh, very much clearly from there. I mean, Tiller, you know that this is a is a thriving community, an enormous chunk of ice, like 30, 40 meters tall, 50, 60 meters wide, is in the very center of the the village, uh, in the middle of a fountain. It's been frozen and and um, 
uh, it's almost like this permafrost in the very center of the town. There's a number of bars and saloons which use the ice from that to create a myriad of delicious drinks. There's a theater house. There's a number of embassies. It, it, the Si Wong Oasis, the, the Misty Palms Oasis is a, um, yeah, it's, it's a hub for people coming from the north, from the south. It is a popular destination for people passing through as well as people to stay. I mean, there's a number of tourist attractions. The sandbenders take people out to see the, uh, the Si Wong Rock all the time. This enormous pillar of rock rising from the center of the desert, which is highly magnetized. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to see. Well, this has been very helpful. Um, I think we're going to go try and find out a little bit more about this, Lena, but I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down today. And um, I'll be thinking for a more amazing interview. It's been perfect. If I could pay you, I would. But I can't. So <laughs> which, is, which is Lena kind of nods and goes, no, no, that's I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, and I, I, I just want to say... I, you lot working with the avatar um i think that's that's really impressive for people your age to be to be stepping up and taking on responsibilities that's uh, it's really good just make sure you don't get into any danger I, i'd hate if my my daughter was was out in trouble you you don't you don't do anything dangerous do you she turns back towards lily i just skip and cool. paint people with coal nothing too dangerous she nods Cool. Okay. Um, well, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be uh, at the lumberyard until sundown, um, and then I'll be. Uh, so from here, if you if you go back two streets, um, in the direction of the lumberyard, my house is just on the left. If you've got any other questions, um, please. Uh, uh, anything I can do to help. Really appreciate that, Lena. We will let you guys know when we catch who or what has done this. Don't leave the spirit yet. I I mean I, I don't want to speak out of turn obviously if you if you're the chief investigator for the avatar I mean you obviously know your stuff um mm -hmm. I, I'd say it's it's most likely bandits I mean taking food going after supplies it's not typical for bandits to go after things maybe this is a, a new group but I mean we've had people come by and, and try and rob us before the only difference is these guys are doing it much more sneakily and it makes sense, right? Like the Avatar and her base of operations is just that way, half a day. We've got Chin Village that way a day. I mean, we're, we're, we're close to a lot of places that could come to our aid if we needed it. I, I don't know. I, I don't think this is that big a mystery. She kind of like gives a bit of a half smile. Uh, not that big a mystery, but that last 10% can always get you, but We'll get those bandits. Don't you worry about it. Team Avatar's on the case. She nods. Good. That's that's great. That yeah, that's really good. And uh, she looks over towards you, Tilla. Uh, it's it's nice that the the Si Wong Oasis, the Mr. Palms Oasis, sent a deputy out. Um, have you have you got backup? Is it just you? Tilla just meets her gaze with, with me? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I didn't realize I was there. That's okay, because you because you came back with uh, Jed. You guys have walked back now. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's just me. Uh, okay. Yep. She just nods, gives you a smile, and then makes her way back towards the lumber yard. Not skipping, sorry, uh, Lily. <laughs> Disappointed, but not surprised. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. okay. We gotta get some bandits. Poppy. Um, we found a lead. We're gonna go chase that lead, and most likely solve the issue. We're gonna follow it. Not. We should, uh, we should go follow that lead. We, we also have a lead. We do. What? What said? Lena that? said it's probably bandits. But, yeah, yeah. Well, that was obvious. Probably most likely bandits, she said. Not spirits. We will die now. Well, we did 90% sure it's bandits, but... Maybe. Can always catch it's, you always that that last, it's always that last 10%. It is. It is. I've seen it happen before, many times. Don't ask me how many times. I can't remember how many times it's happened. Um, but anyway, 
Do you oh, know that's what I'm going to and be like, I don't know these guys very well. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm very smart. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor thing. <laughs> um, so let's pack up your little operation here and actually go do something. Like following the very obvious trail. To be fair, we sent those two knuckleheads to go follow the very obvious trail while yeah. we <laughs> talked to people about the very obvious clues that they'd given us. <laughs> to be fair, as soon as I got closer to it, I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Happens to everyone. Happens um, to everyone. It's like, it's like when you walk into a room and you forget what you're doing in that room. Yeah, every day. Every yeah, day. Yeah, like, like... Did I pick up? Did I pick up my fruit tart? Or like, then you like turn back to? But it's just do you know why that happens? It's because the person controlling you in The Sims has gone like, oh shit, and deleted that action. Yeah. yeah. Alex, stop <laughs> it! <laughs> what are you doing with my life? All oh, they're seeing down here is like wabba 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 Narsha logo. Now I want to play The Sims again. Now. <laughs> You'll binge it for a week and then you'll hate yourself and you'll never play yeah. again. Joke's on you, oh, I already hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Uh, um, so, you guys know which way they went. I'm getting the feeling of. I've been following. Yes. yes. Well. Yeah. To be fair, uh, Kiko, if you had actually asked the right questions, you'd also know which direction they went. Well, I, I, I Kiko, can I just look at your notes real quick? Yeah, sure. I'm like, I just grab them and I just flash them real quick. Just pick them up and just like in front of learn, your face for a second. Learn what dowry means. <laughs> what, 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 why do you know what a dowry is? It's, it's just a, it's a bunch of pictures of me just flexing and just like waving <laughs> water around really cool and like surfing and shit. Because <laughs> you were told, I do remember this, you were told that there were people from one side of the village, like just standing in the forest in one side of the village. I'm not sure if you wrote that down though. Yeah, I've written that down. I've written down there's people in the, like, tray line, it's a bit suspicious. Oh, okay, so there is, so you like, do have the information stuff. right here. It's scrolled in the margins as an afterthought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like, write that down, but then they keep talking and it just gets boring, and then you're like, oh, God, this is I mean, boring. it's really tough, because he asks these questions, right? And then they, they insist on answering them, and it's just, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> like, <Yeah. I'm>, who <laughs> do what's they a man to do? Like, guys, to be honest, I'm a real good bullshit artist, okay? Black thing, I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> what's, what's a chief inspector to do up, when he asks well. questions and people keep insisting on answering them? What's, what's he going to do? It's a really good way to get people to trust you and get a little bit of information out, but when they keep giving too much information, that's why I need someone else to help, you know, compile that for me. I need a note taker. Poppy, how good your handwriting? Okay, no, we're just gonna stop okay. that. Yeah, guys, we're just gonna just move on. We're, we're just, just gonna, gonna okay. we're gonna, we're gonna pack everything up and we're gonna go. I'm just gonna turn to now. Taylor and be like, they're that way, right? And point in the direction of the trail that people kept saying there was people at. Yeah, like and I'm as gonna, soon as we, I'm gonna look as soon as we walked here, into town, to I pointed like, out yes. the trail. Yes, they like were. as soon as we got to town, yes. I was like, "There's a trail over there, guys!" And everyone was like, "Cool, I'm gonna go talk to people." <laughs> <laughs> as you guys all begin making your way over towards the house of um, Toka, you immediately spot the trail you see this disturbed section of earth. At the moment, the section at the back of the house has been excavated, sand piling up on either side. But the gravel clearly marks its way through the hills towards the forest. As you begin following the trail, it's clear for about the first 10, 15 minutes, and then it becomes a little bit harder to see as the ground itself is less cultivated. There's no rolling hills of grass here. It's rough forest undergrowth, making it much harder to follow easily. Could I please get, I'm going to say probably Tiller as an investigator and Jed because he was the one originally chasing this. Could both of you please roll me and assess a situation? Could I... Can I also, using my case in the join as well? Can you I may. Can I ask for anything that just uses focus instead? Uh, in that case then, you can rely on your skills and training. Oh shit, that's a no. I thought I thought you were gonna say no, and I was just, I just clicked the. Yeah. Uh, that's an absolute success. Six plus six is twelve. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, you got a success with consequences. Nice. Okay. Good job, Owen. Eight success with consequences. I missed, Careful. but I'll Careful, hold my Archie. case in the joint question. Okay. You watch yourself, Archie. Um, <laughs> as uh, as you as both Jed and Tiller focus on the trail, you can see that it actually breaks open just behind a tree. The ground no longer disturbed. This must be the entry point of where these people began tunneling. And sure enough, around the base of the tree, you can see the disturbed earth as well as footprints in the ground. These footprints seem to lead deeper into the forest. Bare feet showing a clear Bears. pathway. Yeah, bare, bare feet. <laughs> guys, begin, I th- eh? no, sorry, you go. Yeah, guys, there, there looks like there's like a bunch of people heading that way. Like more than one. Counting the pairs of feet right now as we speak. Can I see how many pairs of feet have been walking along this trail? Uh, it looks like five or six people. But interestingly enough, and this is what Jed spies, only two people went through the tunnel. The rest seem to be milling around, keeping an eye on the area. You can see where the scuffs of their heel prints mark the leaf litter. You can see where one person actually leant against and broke a branch on the tree. It, but only two people were earth bending look, through the, the ground. Can I put my I foot in one of the footprints and see how big it is compared to my foot? Yeah, it's probably about three times the size of your footprint, Lily. Looks like a, a, an adult footprint. They all look are like they? adult footprints? All look like adults. Um, three sets of the footprints are slightly larger than the others. Is there They're probably like three men any... through like sign that like those bags like satchels placed or anything around the base of the tree yeah like the- absolutely it looks like some things were just yeah absolutely it looks like a bag was rested up against the tree including a uh, a section possibly even a, a pile of sacks yes silly cool when you say footprints yeah bare footprints not shoes bare feet yeah that's what i was about to yeah. ask actually sorry let me rephrase two bare How footprints many? four yeah. wearing shoes yeah okay there were two bears. <laughs> Julie noted. Julie noted. Thank you very much. I just made the mistake of seeing what's going on in chat. How has where, how did we get here? I'm not. What is going on? Very intense. Don't, discussion don't ask questions. You don't I, want the answer. Just gonna. Oh, just gonna. <laughs> I saw something about trail mix and now people are talking about wet nuts and I just don't know how to, I don't know how we got, from, why are we talking about trail mix? Why? What? Because someone said that you look like the kind of guy who eats trail mix not on a trail. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. But you can't deny that. He does. I like snacks. I love snacks. No. I'm not going to lie. Like it's, I've, I didn't know what, I didn't know what trail mix was until Archie typed it in chat. I now understand it is like a mixture of snacks. Yeah. I love snacks. I love snacking. Yeah. I'm not going to deny that. I love snacks. Got it. <laughs> Got him. Got him. He likes wet nuts. That's it. Cancel me. Cancel me on Twitter. Oh, X, guys. I I, I do enjoy a snack. Um, sometimes it's some. I, I don't mind nuts. I like biscuits. I like you dried fruit. First. He likes wet nuts. I like Oreos. Um, digestives. I don't um, love digestives. A bit boring. Chocolate. Yes. So, Archie. Ah, uh, sorry. Wait, no, is this is, is this related, related to the conversation or is this Avatar related? No, I just, I feel like that's class as a derail. We're not doing that this session, so it's all good. There was no prediction. <laughs> There's no prediction. <laughs> It'll stay that way. Cool. Maybe. Um, I, I don't know. I wanted to keep that kind of in the other one. We can do it in this one too, again. if you like. Yeah, we can yeah. start doing it again for the derail. It is um, good to keep track of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, question relating to Avatar. Yes. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. So what? you said that there was, what was it, three larger footprints and three smaller. Three smaller. Yeah. Uh, of the barefoot footprints, are they both larger? Uh, no, they're Bears smaller. Larger. The so the three so three of the booted footprints are significantly larger than another set of booted footprints, and then the footprints mm-hmm. are smaller again. And do the footprints look like they would be female or male in shape? Hard to say. 
very hard to say because like you can't really tell gender from a footprint you can tell size roughly from a footprint yeah, Mo- yeah. most of the time people are, are vaguely proportional um hard to tell mm. okay i'm gonna go up to chiller and be like okay so only two earthbenders you can take them right hopefully <laughs> I, I have faith in my abilities. I don't know if I can take two on at once, though. Do you really want these three knuckleheads to take one? I don't think they can. Yeah, I can hear you, you know. Um, how about... No, no, you know no, let them no, we're off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we could do? Mm-hmm. We could make use of your little traps. That's what I was thinking. I'm just gonna say so. And we can use my sand bending to get them into inconspicuous locations. I've been working on a couple of new traps. Let me let me get back to you. And I'm just gonna like start tinkering around in my belt. Jed. Don't yeah. do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna like these traps know, are just gonna become obsolete I, like I mean, straight away. That's that's a pretty pretty ambiguous request. Jed, what do you wanna do? I wanna do everything. <laughs> I wanna do everything. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Jed Ted Kicker, Anywhere. you watch as Lily and Tilla immediately head off and begin plotting something. You hear the word traps thrown about, sand bending thrown about. Looks like they're up to some shenanigans. Possibly mischief. I'm just gonna. If you wanna follow me, I'm just gonna go scout ahead. For podcast listeners, uh, Ted almost like combined face palm wipe sweat from his brow. It was like a. It was a good mix of like. <laughs> that was a real like one motion thing. It was, it was really it impressive. Was despair. That's the worst. <laughs> I'm, I'm channeling my inner all and being like, what would he do? He would assess the situation. He always I'll, situation. I'll follow. I'll follow. Perfect. How stealthy are the two of you being? One of you wearing high-vis orange and yellow while flying on a glider. <laughs> oh, but you can't see me. Do we have gliders just out of curiosity? You would have gliders, yeah. Okay, would you have gliders? Cool. I would have had to all the trees. Uh, in this part of the forest, pretty tall. We're easily looking at 10, 12 meters. Would it be possible for us to get into the canopy and just like move through the canopy with air bending? Absolutely. You could definitely, you could be jumping from the upper branches using yep. air bending rather than just flying above in your gliders. You could yep. be using air bending to leap from, from branch to branch. 100%. Could I get both of you to please roll with rely on skills and training? Yes, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yes, I like that. Hundred percent. Yes, from both. We've got yes. a fourteen yes. and a fifteen. Holy shit! Um, Dang. How do you already have a plus three to one of your skills, Jed? Because I took the air cutting edge, which gives you a plus one to focus to a max of three. That's like my other ability. So I don't have anything special. I just have that. Yeah. Fair enough. Um. As you begin leaping through the trees, moving from branch to branch, keeping to the canopy to uh, get a clear view of the land below, it doesn't take you too long to spy the very thin wisp of smoke rising from a small clearing. And as you stealthily move into position and gaze down from the canopy below, you can see a small makeshift camp has been carved out in the forest floor. What looks like small lean-tos made out of stone these like small, almost uh, rectangular roofs on an angle, bent to form a campsite of five makeshift tents around a very small campfire. Sitting and lounging about, you can see six figures, three men and three women, going through sacks, looking at food, organizing things, moving them from Hessian bags into uh, what looks like a small, almost like a small chest, but with straps to be worn as a backpack. And you can see them kind of joking and laughing. They look pretty young, 20s to 30s, although next session they'll probably be 30 to 40, given Kiko's aging. Um, They look like, yeah, in their their 20s to 30s maybe. Um, 
and I mean, they look like they've been sleeping a bit rough. Their clothing has been torn in some places. It looks like a mixture of browns and greens and undyed linens. It looks like these people have kind of, and the clothing doesn't really fit very well. It's been adapted and, and made to fit. Interestingly though, three of them, two of the women and one of the men are wearing a yellow scarf around their neck, tied off a very small, almost like a handkerchief, but tied off to form this bright, almost like a slash of yellow across their necks. Hmm. What's happening, Shirt? Uh, Why, Why are people laughing? Um... That's what you see. We... Yeah. Okay, what's the, what's the, what's the next thing I will do? Let's let's think about this for a second. Gaslight. Ga w That's w right. Gaslight yes. gatekeep girl boss. Right. Yes. No, no, no. For Arl, it was was it gaslight <laughs> airbend? We had one for Arl. I there was remember. genocide in there somewhere. I think. Oh yeah, genocide. No, yeah. that was the fire lord one. Um, All oh, right. <laughs> gaslight genocide fire lord. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's we've, we've basically got all the information we need. Um, she already knows that there's six, so we just hang here and wait till they get a bit closer. Um, those so they look like they've been like living out here rough, right? They don't it look looks like, like they... and it's and it's pretty. It's a pretty hasty campsite. You reckon yeah. they've been here maybe a couple of days, maybe a week, and it looks like they're packing up, like they're ready to almost like pack up the camp. Get them now. Yeah, we need to go back and grab them and rush over here now then. Yeah. Airbend. As you uh, as you stealthily move through the canopy like ninjas, you quickly meet up with the rest of the party and explain what you've seen. Yeah, there's like six people, like five tents. So there could be more people in the tents, but that's like what we saw moving around three male three female some of them had like these cool scarves on i don't know what that's for but like they had cool scarves um they cool do look scarves. like they're leaving so we need to do if we do want to catch them hurry up but they also don't look like they're that much of a threat i feel like they're just in a bad situation because they Look didn't really hurt, they, don't, they, they didn't really hurt anyone in the village so i also think they're just trying to just get by the best they can yellow, they also did look youngish yes yes poppy um, I could trap them so that we could question them. Or we could just talk to them. I, can... I'm I could happy trap to... them so they can't run away so we can talk to them. We could what just if we, talk... What if we try and talk to them and then trap them if they try and run away? We can only stop them from running away if they try to run away. I'm happy to distract them. I'm no, I think good. we just talk to them. And I think we should be moving. I think we should be moving because they're packing <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, I can talk. I can talk to them. Like yellow. Uh, maybe oh, okay. Uh, okay, maybe not yellow yet. scarves. They were around um, water trouble. Hey, Poppy. Right? Yeah. No. Can you do me a favor? Oh, they yeah. were in Fire Nation. Can you go run ahead no? and mm -hmm. go out behind them? Mm-hmm. That's set the plan. This can only go bad. This can yeah. only go bad. Don't set anything off. No. Don't be yeah. seen. Mm-hmm. And we'll go and talk to them. If any of them try to run, then you set them off. Gotcha. Okay, can I do a mixture of a couple of things? I want to use my Inspired to go one towards survival. Yep. And I want to roll with survival for trespassing, which is one of my bad habits, which Absolutely. I'm indulging by myself. Yep. So when I indulge in it by myself, I also shift my balance further towards survival, so I have a plus three now. Brilliant. Roll with survival, and I get a five. Disregard. <laughs> Okay. Um, and what were you trying to do? You're trying ah. to trespass. Here's what happens. Yeah. Here's what happens. As you all move into position, this is a perfect cliffhanger to end on. As you guys all move up into position, getting to the edge of the camp, Lily nods to you, Tilla, and begins making her way around the side. Why do I keep getting bad rolls? Ted and Jed, do you guys <laughs> take to the three. trees again to like come down from above, or are you staying on the forest floor? I'm going to stay on the floor. Cool. I don't in, that case, be intimidating. Yeah. in that case, Ted, Jed, Kiko, Tilla, you guys get ready to step out. It's at that moment, as you're at the edge of the clearing, you don't think anyone's seen you. It's at that moment when you hear a fuck from the back of the camp as Lily trips over a log and face plants out from behind a tree into the, essentially like the, the outskirts of their camp. 
not onto the ground, but onto a small water barrel, which knocks over immediately, crashing with this enormous loud bang as the water flows over and you hear this tss as the campfire is immediately put out as all of the bandits leap to their feet, look around and see this small girl just face planted in the mud. And as you slowly raise your head <laughs> and look down at them, you watch as two of the women step forward and as they pull their hands back, these jagged drills made of stone rise up behind them, these shards, almost like stalactites rising from the ground beneath them. And as they hold them out and look down, that is where we're going to end for tonight's session. I love a good cliffhanger. Thank it's you okay. so much for joining us. On my us. way out of this, guys, don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure this will be fine. Um, thank you so much for joining us, everybody, for our Avatar Legends session with the legacy of Kyoshi. It has been wonderful having you join us once again. Thank you so much, Dragon, for joining us as Tiller. Looking forward to uh, to getting your uh, your camera on for next session and having the whole party yeah. here as a team. Um, Andrew, it looks like you had a question. You look like you really I, deep. I get lost. I get lost in the way there. You get lost on the way there. What do you mean? Yeah, I, 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 I'm not here yeah. for the next session. I'll play I, 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 I took a wrong I'll turn somewhere. I took a wrong turn. I zor I zored it somewhere. That's right. No, no, I'll, I'll play as Jed. That's fine. I mean, unless, unless like Ted and Jed, maybe Ted, you send Jed back to go and like let the village know where you've gone. You suddenly realize no one knows where you guys are, and if something goes wrong, you've got no support. There's no backup. You guys are alone in the forest. What do you reckon? Is that something Ted and Jed would think of? Hard to say. I'm in Dama. The, bro the brother's dim. The brother's dim smart. would not think of that, That's I don't think. Smart. That's too smart. That's too smart. Okay. Um, maybe, dumb, though, though, maybe but... Tilla would have pointed that out to them and told yeah. one of them to go. Oh, yeah. It, it told Jed to go. Perfect. In that case, then, that's a good explanation for where Jed is for next session. Easy. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. If you're watching this on Twitch, don't go anywhere. We're going to go right into the channel. But if you're watching this on YouTube or on the podcast, um, you can help prevent bad rolls by hitting that subscribe button. Um, every time you hit the subscribe button, if it is your first time hitting it, uh, another natural 20, or in this case, two sixes, are put into the VTT bank that Brie could, could have used this session. So really, it's I not our fault. I have failed every roll we today, just, except if you guys, the test wait, roll. Except the test roll, <laughs> yeah. Do a roll right now. <laughs> no, 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 don't use it. Don't use it. I'm so ready for this. I got a six. It was still a miss. Still a miss. <laughs> See, <laughs> you guys can help. You guys can help. What is out. going on? Just, just hit that subscribe button. The comment, leaving a comment, also works, and hitting the like button also works as well. Those, those are the three guaranteed ways to guarantee, like, to make sure that there are good rolls ready for the guys to use. Um. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you all again next time. Until then, stay safe, stay well, and goodbye, everybody. Goodbye! Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.